Road to the Young Farmer Final, brought to you by FMG. Well, the Road to the Young Farmer Final this week heads along the main artery of New Zealand, State Highway 1. We're in the North Island, weaving around the Great Lake of Taupo. This is the Waikato Bay of Plenty Regional Final. Eight contestants vying to represent the great farming region. And one of them is Dwayne Cowan. Now, he's been runner-up in the regionals three times. Can he shake off that bridesmaid's tag? Well, let's find out. The young farmer journey continues by the shores of Lake Taupo. The second largest freshwater lake in the South Pacific, it feeds the mighty Waikato River, which is the lifeblood of the agricultural industry for the Waikato Bay of Plenty region. And there's no sleeping in for the contestants. They've been up since six and have already tested the top two inches with agribusiness knowledge. So the briefing on the day's events begins and we get to meet them. My name is uh, Baz Nailis. I'm uh, from the Māori Pirate Club. Uh, today's goal is to, uh, to give it my best shot, to uh, make the most of the practical and hopefully get myself in the top four spot. Hi, I'm Michael Courtman. I'm from the Hauraki Club on the Hauraki Plains um, and I'm looking forward to a good day out today. Fergus King, Nara Young Farmers, in it to win it. Yeah, my name is Josh Cousins, I'm from the Eastern Bay Young Farmers Club. Um, I'm here with my wife today and my family supporting me and hopefully today we're going to give winning the best shot that I can. My name is Thomas Harlowich, I'm here representing Takawa West Young Farmers Club, hoping to do really well in the agri-sports. Hi, I'm Brady Mitchell, 29 from the Reparoa Club and I'm here to have a great day and learn a bit. Yeah, I've competed in three regional finals before and had the bridesmaid tag awarded to me three times, so here today we're hoping to look, looking to go one better and take out the title of regional finalist. Hi, I'm Erica Van Reenen and I'm representing the Hamilton City Young Farmers Club. It's great to be here on this beautiful sunny Taupo day representing the mighty Waikato. Three, two, one. The first challenge is animal care for 27-year-old Hauraki farmer Michael Courtman who has a dedicated fan base up as early as he is. Trying to find uh, eczema spores, so shaking up the water and the spores supposedly come out. I'm a member of the Hauraki Club up in uh, the Hauraki Plains. i got a few people here supporting me. Hauraki Young Farmers! One fan stands out from the rest. Yeah, my fiance Laura, yeah, she's, she's lovely. She uh, supports me all the way through. This is Mike's first time um, making it to the regionals. Have a little crack at studying and might be the dark horse that makes it through at the end, we'll see. But as a first timer, Michael's keeping it real. Oh, the one to watch would be um, Dwayne Cowan today. I think he's he's been here before quite a few times and unluckily he came runner up. Coincidentally, Reparo's Dwayne Cowan's in the next tent doing some agronomy. That's grass. Yeah, so with the agronomy module, we just had to answer a few animal health questions and then create a fertiliser mix rate for a turnip crop. Yeah, so I had a pretty disappointing result at the end of last year, like came right down to the wire and ended up missing out by two points on the grand final. Yeah, pretty determined this year to go one better and get down to that grand final in Christchurch in July. Dwayne's come second at a regional level for the last three years, so obviously that can be quite frustrating, just being so close to first. Um, so this year he's definitely, definitely hoping to get through to that national level. Forestry is a large part of the area's agricultural landscape with the huge Kangaroa forest nearby. And Whakatane's Josh Cousins appears to be a natural, despite carrying an injury. Last weekend I was actually racing motocross and I come off and smack my shoulder on the ground and end up with a broken collarbone. But he seems to be getting away with it in this module. Well done. Yes. Well done. Thank you very much. Just measure that. What am I going to mark you down on? Uh, I'll have to find something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't give everybody a perfect score, but that is a perfect bit of wood. What I'm going to do here is run like a stand here for the uh, Taubo creation. It's a bit of a uh, work of art, to be fair. With this module, the engineering module, they have to cut, gas cut a, a shape out of six ball plates and then they have to weld it onto a stake and it turns into a garden ornament which they're looking to auction off at the end of the day. Every local should recognise this as being the outline of the Great Lake Topo. And it's not sure to support. This is his second time in the regional finals. Last time he came third. He is currently dairy farming and she milking 800 cows across two farms. I started farming when I was 16. I've grown through the industry um, from that. And 
yeah, and I suppose as most dairy farmers are, the profession are, the, the goal of farm ownership is pretty uh, high on my uh, agenda. Uh, just doing the venison module here, and uh, I'm on a dairy farm in uh, Matamata. So compared to that, uh, most uh, all I have to do with venison is hunting deer down at Taupo. So they're required to bone out a venison hind leg, in which to see clean white bones. Uh, they take out the four primal muscles and to be able to name those four parts. It is going really well. There's been unorthodox methods of doing it, but the, the outcome looks pretty good. And as you can see, the dog's a bit hungry. He's not much meat left on that bone. So I'm um, just asking a bit about deer velvet, which is uh, not my strong suit, being a dairy farmer, but um, I'm working my way through it. Yeah. Brady Mitchell's dad has flown in from Melbourne especially to support him. Served his time as a motor mechanic apprentice and got into pig hunting. He decided that uh, it's a bit far to the pig hunting ground, so he changed his occupation to a farmer. I started farming about nine years ago. I've always been dairy farming. I milked herds from 1100 to 250, what we're on now, and uh, it's a pretty comfortable number for us, just me and my wife Amber. And uh, yeah, we're going 50-50 share milking next season, and uh, also going into a joint venture with the same farm as, as farm owners. This is Brady's first time entering, so it's been a good experience, I think, for all of us, and it's good fun to watch. Hamilton's Erica Van Rienen's feeling her way in the machinery module. So I grew up on a very small farm in Wanaka in central Otago. I have always been passionate about agriculture and also the environment because my dad took me bush a lot so he um, instilled a passion for the environment. Oh Erica's done uh, very well here today. She's, she's listening which is a big helpful benefit when you're showing people what to do. Erica's not farming every day but she's definitely a mover and a shaker in the agricultural world. So I've been involved with Young Farmers for about six years now and when I moved up to the Waikato and I started the Hamilton City Young Farmers Club that was a really exciting opportunity and great to be able to develop some other leaders within Young Farmers and that club's just going from strength to strength. We're here supporting Erica, uh, this is her first time in, uh, in the regional finals. She is uh, Beef and Lamb New Zealand's Environmental Extension Manager, uh, that's a national role. This is great for someone who's allergic to grass. It's the first time at the regionals for 22-year-old Thomas Harlowich, but he seems pretty confident. Today we're um, putting a hoof slip on a uh, lame cow's foot to allow it to take pressure off the saw on her foot. Yeah, we've got a lot of supporters here. Mum and Dad come over from Rotorua. My partner Sophie Dickey come down with me from Te Aumuru. Um, and the whole Young Farmers Club from Takawa West is also here with me. Thomas is pretty handy around the house, he's built a chicken house. Do you know what his party trick is? <laughs> he's got a massive tongue. <laughs> so taking a quick look at the scores now, and the old hand, Dwayne Cowan's in the lead, but not by much, with Brady Mitchell and Erica Van Rienen nipping at his heels. The crowd's gathered for the head-to-head -head challenge at the Tongarero North Domain, and the task is to build a planter box. They've all set about measuring and cutting, and before Brady's even started, he's got a penalty. I just forgot the safety glasses. Safety first. Poor old Josh Cousins will be certainly feeling his broken collarbone right now. Brady's back into it, and it looks like Erica's drawn blood. Nah, she's right. Looking good, Erica. But she's getting a lot of support from the sidelines. Erica's not the only one struggling with her saw. And Tirao's Baz Nellis is wishing he'd splashed out on a new one. Tiawamutu's Thomas Harlowich is going too fast and cops a 30 second penalty. I had the screw in my mouth. <laughs> Thomas's planter box is starting to take shape, but the judge is staying vigilant. Uh, Thomas once again had the screws in his mouth. Dwayne Cowan is steady as she goes, making sure he gets the points for a quality job. Eric has built in some spikes, which is meant to help the planter box fit together better. And in spite of getting those penalties, Thomas Harlowich finishes first. Coming up on the road to the Young Farmer final, it's Agrisports, featuring of all things, worm burgers and another gripping quiz night.
The road to the Young Farmer final leads us to Main Street Topor to decide who'll represent the Waikato Bay of Plenty region in the grand final. An enthusiastic crowd has gathered on the Tongarero domain in the heart of Topor for the Agrisport Athletics. And they hop into it with a sack race to the end of the arena. Once they get to the end, they have to find the key for the Honda Quad and reverse it all the way back to the other end without any penalties. Brady Mitchell's avoided the first penalty by removing the saw placed on the front of the quad bike. But Josh Cousins and Fergus King weren't so lucky. The next task is to fill up the planter box they made in the head-to-head -head competition. Luckily for Erica, her box is a bit more solid than it was before. With all that bacteria in the soil, it's important to wear a dust mask and gloves. Tell everybody, oh, the whistles are blowing like it's a rugby game. He didn't have a safety mask or gloves on when handling okay, coated Macy. Some techniques are more efficient than others. With the planter box full, it's time to pack the pallet with sacks of fertiliser. It's lunchtime at the barbecue, and on the menu, a litre of milk and an actual worm burger, while they cook the venison to perfection. Thomas is hoovering up that worm burger like it's his favourite choice. How do you know when worms cook? The milk and the worm burger had an effect on everyone except for Thomas. But it's his drill that's put the brakes on him for now. Dwayne takes a moment to let the milk and the worms settle. Thomas is working up a bit of a sweat while the others are gaining on him and are starting to get their gait swung. Finally Thomas gets the drill to cooperate but now the nails won't go into the wooden fence. Meanwhile, Baz resorts to brute force. And Erica's discovering a newfound respect for power tools. Thomas has got those rungs on, and his friend is right, he does have a very long tongue. The K-Line Irrigator is the final task in the decathlon, and Baz Nellis is the first one there. Thomas is not far behind and it looks like he's met one of those before because he's making such light work of it. And Thomas Harlowich is first to finish again in the Agrisports Decathlon. Oh, I was very disappointed in getting to that gate first and then that, that drill not making it all the way through. And finally looking at the scores, the experienced Dwayne Cowan is still in the lead and Brady Mitchell is closing in with Baz Nellis not far behind. Eric has dropped back a bit but she's still quietly confident. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm just hoping I get to the top four so I can give that speech. The final part of the competition is when the sun goes down, an elegant affair at Topor's Great Lake Centre. There's an eager audience awaiting to see who will go to the grand final representing the Waikato Bay of Plenty region. Can Dwayne finally shake that bridesmaid's tag after coming second three times in a row? Erica Van Rienen. Lincoln University. Correct. The game always changes when it comes to the evening show and the pressure often gets to the inexperienced competitors. Michael Courtman, our dark horse, won the Silver Fern Farms Agrisports today but has gone quiet under the glare of the spotlight. Dwayne has certainly done his preparation. Last year he lost to Tim Vandermolen who went on to become the Young Farmer of the Year. 
So far tonight, Dwayne has already won the Egg Mart agribusiness and Ravensdown agri-skill sections of the competition. And experience is giving him the edge on the buzzer. For first time at Erica, she's happy to have won the Lincoln University agri-growth section and seems pretty confident with her facts. Erica Van Rienen. 13.75. Correct. The top four go up and Erica's going to give that speech after all. We may find in the long run that bad food is a deadlier weapon than the machine gun. An insightful quote made by George Orwell, a well-known animal farmer. Water is something that we sometimes take for granted. Nevertheless, it is the lifeblood that gives life to all living things. The main benefit is giving you the confirmation that you know you're growing your business well. Winning the Shemilk of the Year will give you the, you know, the approval from them that you're, you're doing your job well. Having a mate system in place allows a fully traceable meat supply chain and safeguards New Zealand's brand of meat going into these pretty lucrative markets. Markets. To our top four contestants, the best of luck. Hands to buzzers. Hopefully this goes well for you. What computer program is commonly used? Bears. Overseer. Overseer is correct. How big is a micron? <laughs> Dwayne Cohen. One, one thousandth of a millimetre. That is correct. Last question of the night now. How many dots are there on a dice? Dwayne Cohen. 21. Congratulations, you have that correct. In the end, it's a well-deserved win by the never-give-up Dwayne Cowan, and it's been a long time coming. Pretty different feeling to this time last year, eh? It was pretty heartbreaking, the result last year. Coming so close yet so far away, so yeah, definitely a pretty happy 